Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, uh, my name is V. I am an actuary and I'm currently working and living in Canada. To be an actuary, uh, one needs to be a member of an actuary organization. Uh, so the Society of Actuaries is one of the most popular actuary organizations around the world. And uh, I went through uh, the education system offered by the SOA uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, so today I'm excited to uh, have a series to talk about the different uh, actual exam, especially the preliminary exam. And join me is uh, my friend Logan. Hi there, I'm uh, Logan from Malaysia. I am a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and I have been working as a product and pricing actuary in the life insurance industry in Malaysia for more than eight years now. I tutor actuarial students for a few exams, including exam LTAM via Zoom classes. I'm really passionate about teaching and mentoring students. I do this on a part-time basis, and I hope to play a part in contributing to our next generation of actuaries. Being a life actuary, I really enjoy being able to connect the theory from LTAM to the practical work that I do. I feel that teaching this topic strengthens my understanding of the fundamental principles of life insurance. I try to impart the joy of life insurance to my LTEM students as well. So LTEM is aimed stand same for long-term actuarial mathematics. It is one of the preliminary exams that is required in order to become an associate of the Society of Actuaries. The exam tests your knowledge of theoretical basis of contingent payment models to insurance and other financial risk. Fun fact. I didn't write this exam because it's actually a newer exam that replaced um, MLC exam in 2018. So MLC stands for Model for Life Contingencies. From the names, uh, you can see that they have very many similar content. This also shows that exam syllabus is always subject to change to make it more relevant and keep up to date with the development of the actual profession. Uh, today, we will talk about LTAM exam first in this uh, series because it actually will be replaced next year. Logan, can you please let us know what upcoming changes and expected for this exam? The LTAM exam will be offered for the last time in spring 2022. After that, candidates will have to take the exam FAM, that is Fundamentals of Actuarial Mathematics, which is a three and a half hour multiple choice exam. And then they will have a choice whether to take the advanced LTAM exam or the advanced STAM exam. Exam FAM will cover both the foundational or, or the basic parts of the LTAM and STAM exams while the advanced LTM exam will con cover content that is similar to the current written section of the LTM exam. Currently, the syllabus for these new exams have not been released yet, so we don't know much more right now. As students will now choose between the advanced LTM and the advanced LTM exams, effectively, they will need to make a decision about specialization at this stage. Previously, the decision for specialization was done only after the associate level when choosing the fellowship track. Now students will have to decide which exam will be more relevant for their career at this earlier stage. I think it's a good thing that students can decide which exams to take earlier since this can help with jobs and practice and also help with exam studying uh, as I found myself actually have more motivation when studying topics that I prefer. So I'm sure we will find out about a new exam soon and Logan will be back on the channel to talk about it. So LTAP is aimed at some thorough knowledge of uh, calculus and probability which are uh, covered in the exam key. Uh, mathematics statistics, which is covered in one of the VV, VEE credit, uh, interest theory as covered in exam FM. Uh, so it includes both multiple choice and written answer questions. Uh, actually, back then, all of the preliminary exam that I wrote only had multiple choice questions. With written exam, you do get partial marks. So I think it's a good thing. So Logan, can you share with us some tips for this exam? So the first tip which is uh, common to all exams is that you have to plan your time well and uh, my the what I tell my students is you should never run out of time even if you don't know how to answer some questions you get stuck uh, there should be no situation where you run out of time because that means um, you haven't thought about your time very carefully you haven't planned it out so for exam LTAM um, we can be specific about it um, in the exam LTEM, you have 96 points for the exam. 
and the total exam time is four hours. You have an extra 15 minutes of reading time, but your time to do the exam is four hours. So when we take 96 points into four hours, that gives us 2.5 minutes per point. So that means a maximum of five minutes per multiple choice question because each MCQ gives you two, point, two points. So that gives you a maximum of five minutes per MCQ and a maximum of 100 minutes for the entire MCQ section. And then, of course, in the written answer section, you will look at the uh, points allocated for each question and you can budget your time accordingly. And if you get, if you, if you feel a question is going to take too much of your time, so you, you should have a feel for these questions within the first minute of your, of your exam or so. Within, within the first minute of that quest, reading that question, you should have a good feel about it. So if you feel that you're going to have more trouble with it, then I encourage you to skip it and come back to it in your second round. Now, tip number two is you should, you need to do the best that you can in the multiple choice question. Uh, in the multiple choice section before going to the written answer section. This is because this exam has a special rule about it. The rule is that you must get at least a minimum score on the multiple choice quest, uh, section before they will uh, grade your written answer section. The minimum threshold is usually 12 out of 20 questions. So what this rule means is that even if you do really well in the written answers, if you don't pass the minimum threshold of 12 out of 20 in the multiple choice question, you will, you will still fail. So make sure that you spend uh, enough time on the multiple choice questions to cross that hurdle and you have to practice well for it so that you are comfortable doing multiple choice questions. Tip number three, uh, LTM has this written answer section. So, so show all your workings in the written answer section. I can't emphasize on this enough. Many students are afraid of the written answer section, um, but it, it is something that we should not be afraid of. We just need to strategize correctly for it. So you can actually get a lot of part marks in this section by showing your workings, even if your final answer is wrong. And when in doubt, it is better to write more than to write less, um, you know, because when you write more, there are chances that some, some of the content that you have written will give you some part marks. And also pay attention to the number of points all allotted for each question. If a question has only one point, then don't spend too much of time elaborating your answers. Then two or three sentences should be more than enough. Given the upcoming changes, do you have any advice for people who is considering this exam? Uh, when should one take it and vice versa? If you have already passed STAM, then I recommend skipping LTAM as you just need to take the live section of FAM, that is FAML that will be easier than LTAM. If you haven't taken both exams and you are keen to pursue the life insurance track, then I recommend that you take LTAM in the current format because if you pass it, you will get credit for one and a half exams. You will get credit for FAML and ALTAM. A -L -T -A -M. You will only need to take the short-term section of the FAM, that is FAMS. So that's half an exam if you pass LTAM. I hope you find this video helpful for those who are writing this exam soon or consider writing it uh, the last time. <laughs> so exam changes can create uncertainty, but it can also help you get some advantage if you do get different credits if you pass certain exam during the transaction. Uh, so do your research and once you decide what exam to take, put in your best effort to ensure you can pass. Uh, but if you can't, don't give up either. Seem to be common actually, it can be a long and challenging journey. If you have more questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment sections and look out for the next future video for a few more uh, exam P and exam FM. Uh, so you can also contact Logan on LinkedIn, which I will leave a link in the video description sections. If you're look, uh, looking for additional tutoring uh, to make sure you pass the exam before it's replaced. Uh, good luck everyone and I will see you in future videos uh, talking about other actual exams.